joins, I'll let them in halfway through. Yeah. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, hope you hope you're doing well. This uh, autumnal autumnal day feels quite autumnal. Um, unfortunately, the clocks are going to change this weekend, um, so I can't help with that. But what I can help you with today is a uh, topic that's very dear to my own heart um, uh, in our agency. It's measuring marketing return on investment. So this is uh, webinar number six, okay, of part of the Recover and Rise SME Digital, Digital Accelerator Program, okay. Um, so we had series one, getting online, series two, this series, customers and marketing. And we've got two more series to come as well. So systems and productivity, all those efficiency tools. You can get tickets for that right now. And then series four, growth and expansion. So I mean, we're not even halfway through the program yet. There's already been some great content and some and some more great content to come. Okay. Uh, so before before we get into uh, uh, the, the content of this session, um, just want to remind that as part of this program, and I know there, there are a few of you on, on this call today, so gives away Digital Champions, there is a, a free resource for West Sussex businesses called Digital Champions, okay? And the Digital Champions, it's, it's, it's free resource to help you guys if, 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 you, know, if, you, if you come to a, a course like this or any of the courses and you think, actually, I need some more help in that particular topic, you can get in touch with the digital champions and they, they someone will be dedicated to you to give you eight hours of support with that problem okay to help shift the dial on whatever whatever that problem will be whether it's marketing or it's business strategy whether it's productivity etc so it's a great resource i'm going to share a slide at the end which is going to exactly uh, tell you how to get in touch with them um now before um before i go into the content as well so th there's lots there's lots of different digital champions so uh, we've got Andrew Kerry Bailey about websites and CRMs. Malcolm, I know you're on the call. Hello, Miss, uh, is, uh, Mr. E-commerce. Uh, we have Lisa for productivity and processes. Rachel, I've seen her on the call as well, is our SEO expert, marketing plans, tactical activity advice. We've got Rob for digital transformation. We've got Susan Winchester, who's going to help you with digitally focused product uh, questions and Roya uh, is about digital growth. So again, I'll share a slide of exactly how you can get in touch. But if you are in West Sussex and you are a small business, this is free. You'd 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 be a fool not to take advantage of it. I think so. There we go. So this is webinar number six from our series of uh, customers and marketing. So this is measuring marketing return on investment. So. Before, before I go into this, I'm going to launch a small poll, okay? Um, and I would just like you guys to fill in the poll for me. Okay, um, just get the technology to work. Okay, here's the poll, just coming up now. Just hopefully you can see a poll that's been launched. I'll just ask you to um, uh, type into there. How confident are you about measuring marketing performance? Okay, I'm interested to see exactly how everyone's doing. Okay, a few more stragglers just to input that into me. Okay, there we go. Two more, one more. Okay, so I'll just share the results. And you could, should be able to see that seven somewhat confident, four not very confident, and on one's confident. So hopefully uh, at the end of this course, uh, we will shift that dial for the majority of you, okay? Okay, so uh, I'm Stu Davies. I'm a head of agency of Creative Blooms. Creative Bloom is a search marketing agency. Okay, so we specialize in helping our clients get found on Google and we specialize in helping local businesses, SMEs such as yourself, green sector and charities. Okay, so marketing measuring performance. Okay, so here's, here's, here's a rough agenda of what we're going to look at. So I'm going to talk about how how we in the agency, how we, you know, how we measure digital marketing return on investment. It's so, it's, you could get so lost with digital marketing, but how do I actually measure its worth? How do I know what's working? How do I know if I put my investment in one area or another? What's working? And, and so this is ultimately what we need to, we need to get to, to, you know, how, how does it impact my sales? How does it impact my bottom line? What works well and what doesn't? We're going to do a lot of focus on uh, one particular platform uh, that we use in digital marketing called Google Analytics. 
Um, Google Analytics is free and it kind of pulls everything together for your for your digital footprint. So we're, we're going to be quite Google Analytics heavy, but we are also going to talk about some of the offline and online performance reporting and how we kind of join join some of these things up. So just before um, I get I talk for the next hour, I'd like everyone to find the chat for me. OK, um, just say hello. And what I'd like you to do is just to say, what's your current challenge with your marketing? It's it, it, like measuring marketing forms. Like, why are you on this course? Just, it, just top, tap that into the chat for me to say hello and uh, what, your, what your current challenge or, or, or issue might be, just so we can capture those for, um, uh, for the course Q&A. Did you find the chat for me, chaps? There we go, Alison. So many metrics available, and always wants to focus on. Definitely talk about that in this course. <laughs> know what to look for in terms of measuring. Exactly. There's so much to measure. What do I measure? How do I measure? The slides will be available, and the recordings will be uh, made available by West Sussex at a later date. Where's the best place to pull all the data together? Okay, brilliant. Okay, so someone's just new to it. So how do I, you know, okay, yes. Yeah, so some very, very common, very common questions that we see um, with measuring, measuring marketing performance. Okay, keep putting them in there. Um, I'm gonna move through the, um, uh, th through the deck next. Okay, so there we go, a few more coming through. So measurement. Okay, so measurement. Let's just talk about what the word measurement when applied to uh, digital marketing. Okay, so what are we trying to achieve with our measurements of our marketing? So, you know, what we're trying to do is trying to tether, so attach uh, <laughs> marketing activity to our bottom line. Ultimately, you know, we're trying to say, hey, you know, how much business does my marketing bring me? Okay, and I do different things for marketing and I, I put different effort into you know, my different marketing, uh, I need to know, I need to know what works, because if you don't, you are trying to uh, drive your, here's my first nautical analogy, Ollie, you are trying to uh, drive a submarine without a sonar, okay, you, you're quite blind in terms of knowing what's working, you know, something might be working, but what, you're not sure. So we're trying to market, we're trying to tether marketing activity to the bottom line, ultimately, and there's ways we can do this. We also want to know what's working for what we call optimization. Okay, so the word optimization means to continually improve something. Okay, um, so we optimize our efforts. So we can use measurement to say, well, what works? What doesn't work? You know, I did this on a Tuesday and that worked, or I did this on a Friday and, and that particular worked, or, or it didn't. So, you know, we can, we can use measurement to help us through that journey and through that process. Um, and we're also looking for signs of poor performance related to our marketing. So we can change our strategy, our tactics accordingly, because as well as being important to know, well, what's working, therefore do more of it. We also need to understand, well, what maybe didn't work, maybe do less of that, or what are the reasons why that didn't work? Again, the process of measurement helps inform our strategies uh, uh, and our tactics uh, for marketing. So this is the only formula in this in this slide deck you'll be pleased to know and customer lifetime value okay it's a very important metric that we use a lot in the agency so there is a formula to calculate a customer lifetime value uh, or you can use a free calculator i use free calculators it's easier um but what effectively what you're trying to do is i guess the purpose of this is um you know, if we're thinking about sales, okay, sales versus marketing activity, trying to get to a return on investment figure. So we're going, to, we're going to take our costs, fairly straightforward, cost of marketing, cost of effort, might be time, you know, okay, you might put your time in as a, as a timesheet. You see, it's, it's easier to get to the cost. But what we're not looking at, the value, certainly the value for a marketer is not just the direct sale that you get from, from that marketing, okay? It's what we call a customer lifetime value, okay? what is the lifetime value of a customer to me okay and this will help you calculate it so uh you know it's and it looks at um 
you know, the average sale, uh, the average sale per week or by month, you know, how, how often they visit, what the average gross profit is, and then the average customer lifetime in terms, in terms of years. Now, you, you can calculate this stuff using, um, if you go, go into series three, there's going to be a lot of talk on di- digital tools, accounting tools, things like that, that can help you kind of get this information quite quickly about your client base. So, um, again, just another pitch for series three on the okay so net profit lifetime of a future customer okay that's for us marketing measuring its true value because i want to know for every person we bring into the business what is the lifetime value okay what's that worth to us it's more important than just the, the direct sale on that day and here's the important bit okay of that of that metric okay so say my average customer lifetime value for a customer is a thousand pounds okay over one year okay so i've got on average a customer brings me a thousand pounds a year okay and that is i only have customers for a year all right so i'm not willing to spend more than that to acquire one customer over one year otherwise i'm not making any money and and that's kind of you know where how, how where you can start to build a good return on investment figure now what we can do is we can then start equating that back to our marketing statistics. And we're going to start talking through all the marketing measurements that we can apply. So, yeah, we can use tools like Google Analytics to then put stats like that customer lifetime value into, into, into a bit more kind of granular use. So say, you know, I need uh, to get one new customer on a direct debit, you know, worth thousand pounds customer lifetime value. Okay, I need. I know that I need to get twenty people signed up to my newsletter in order to get one customer through through my digital marketing funnel. Okay, and I know roughly because I use Google Analytics to be able to track all of this stuff. I know that I need to get five hundred people onto a specific landing page on my website in order to get twenty people signed up to the newsletter. So if I get five hundred people on the website, twenty people sign up the newsletter. And in order to get 500 engaged people onto that landing page, I, know, I, know, I, I need to get 5,000 people on, on the entire website. Okay, so I'm looking at the metrics and just saying it down. So I'm able to say, actually, I'm not willing to pay more than £50 per newsletter lead, £2 per person who engages on my landing page, and 20p a session uh, a website hit. So what I'm able to do is then use that, use that data to be able to count oh, how much am I willing to be prepared on a website investment, on a search engine optimization investment, on a content strategy, on you know resources, you can start to help, start to drive the decisions of where is the best bang for your book on your marketing by taking the customer lifetime value, starting to kind of uh, pin it, peg it back into some of these granular metrics, which I'm going to talk to you next about Google Analytics. So how do we? So I just I might have I might have just introduced a few terms which might have been gobbledy geek to people there so you know i talked about sessions and hits and so where's all this coming from so let's talk first about google analytics so just in the chat for me just while i continue talking if you just put your experience of google analytics whether you've got it whether you've you've used it whether you've got it and you don't know how to use it whether someone set it up for you and it's that gathering dust or whether you're you know fairly adept at using it yeah never use it most people have it never used it okay yeah similar okay perfect just so love it and use it a lot there's andrew yeah (laughs) okay good yeah so yeah okay good right okay so what is google analytics okay it's often talked about people might not know what it actually is so um here's what i think it is here's what it's used for okay here's what the benefits of google analytics so it will help you track your marketing return on investment okay that's pretty that's pretty pretty useful right google analytics is free it's a free platform it's a little bit of code that has to go onto a website so if you're not very comfortable doing that you will need to get a developer or someone like us to help install it it can also track user behavior and and grouped attributes of users so as a user someone who comes to your website okay so we can track our digital marketing return investment by the different marketing channels, very useful. Uh, we can track user behavior, we can see what happens when people arrive on the website, and we can see the demographics and the attributes of them. And that gives us the data to help inform our strategies, whether it's working or not. So I think, you know, there's some of the main, main, main benefits of, of Google Analytics. 
So before I uh, jump into the platform itself, so I'm going to spend about half, good half an hour or so today, uh, maybe a little bit longer if, if we've got a little bit more time in the end, just taking you through how to use Google Analytics and what we use it for in, in the agency as well and how we use it on, say, a weekly basis, on a monthly, quarterly, and a, a yearly basis to assess our, assess our strategies. Okay, so account terminology. Okay, so we're in the world of Google Analytics now. And so um, Google will talk about an account. Okay, so an account will be anchored to an individual. So the account is probably you or your business Google Gmail account. Okay, so Google will have an account which will attach things to. So that's, you know, so Creative Bloom have got a Google account. Okay, and within there we have um, many different uh, Google Analytics uh, reports. Okay, next they will talk about a property. Okay. So a property is a individual website or an app. OK, so you, if you have multiple websites you look after, you will have multiple properties within your account. OK, so a property is, is each entity. Uh, I think entity is a better word, but, you know, there we go. Uh, I'm not in charge of the naming of things in Google. Um, maybe maybe I should be. Maybe I should apply for that job. Uh, but uh, yeah, so each each entity, each property, because, you know, any, the data needs to be collected independently, okay, because they're different digital touch points for you, okay. And then uh, within each property, um, there's something called a view. Uh, a view is just a different way that we might change a data set. So um, without trying to jump into too much jargon, we can actually change the configuration of our reports. We can include or exclude certain data. We can move things around a little bit. We can set different... Um, reporting goals or conversions which i'm going to talk about later within the view so it's just a way of us to be able to kind of have different views of our websites um, and i'll explain I'll explain how it all kind of fits together when i jump into the platform overview okay so now i'm just going to go through some of the the jargon but these are actually some of the metrics that Google uses and that you know we use and Google uses um, within Google Analytics. And, and these are some of the things we want to measure. Okay, so Google talks about sessions. Okay, so a session is a visit to your site. Okay, so um, each time a person or potentially a computer robot. Okay, now Google is pretty good at filtering out computer robots from from your traffic but not entirely um more advanced google analytics users will put in filters so you can actually kind of keep all of that away but you know generally it's going to be a, a, a visitor a, a single visit okay by a person okay now that visit i think lasts about 30 30 minutes in google's google analytics so every 30 minutes if i came back a few times in a day it would repeat it as multiple sessions okay OK, but that's an important thing for us to um, measure. That's that's what we call the overall traffic um, for a particular for a particular website or a particular marketing channel. Then we've got users. OK, we are users. Yeah. OK, here's Tron uh, again. And I don't actually know why Chewbacca was in here, but there we go. But Tron was quite big on the users, if you like, if you like your 1980s sci fi. Um, and, you know, so uh, Google will uh, use um, ratios a lot. And we're on ratios are quite helpful because ratios help us take two metrics and to combine them to be able to see performance. So uh, Google will talk about percentage of new users and percentage of returning users because they're quite useful uh, metrics for us to measure. Yeah, of the total users who come to my website, how many of them are new? what percentage and how many of them are returning again you know think about your different your marketing funnel and the different things you might to me measure you know so one's one's measuring customer loyalty and advocacy and one's measuring how well the top of your funnel is working in attracting new people into your into your, into your marketing so again that's two 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 nice metrics in there and, Go and you can cut all of google analytics data by those metrics so it'd be quite quite useful Okay, page views. So our website is our digital digital anchor point, unless you've got an app um, or you are using a social platform as a digital anchor point, but Google Analytics won't help you there. So, 
but you know page views is quite important because well actually this is a big 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 metric of engagement you know how and, and how well the content on the structure of the website works so we're quite big on page views in our agency as a metric you know and google will display it as a decimal you know for each visit how many pages do people navigate through the website okay do they get to the places where i want them to get to are they going into deeper content because we know that people uh, users with higher page views are more likely to convert and convert means take the action you want them to do when they land to your web website than lower page view metrics okay so page views useful useful metric as well and so then there's some uh, other metrics in here so a metric called bounce rate okay so this is usually expressed as a percentage. Now, what a bounce rate means is that someone comes into the website, lands, then leaves. Okay. Why isn't that good, potentially? Someone pop into the chat for me. Why that might not be a good thing for us. Why would a high bounce rate not be great? Someone pop that into the chat for me. Shows poor web content, can't engage in developer business purchase. Yeah, and we don't want people leaving straight away. Are you going to get that person back? So, you know, we've spent, you know, if you've been to any of our other webinars, okay, you know, you know, you might have been writing a lot of content. You might have, you know, been investing in SEO. You might have been doing a lot on SEO, uh, search, uh, social media. You might have jazzed up your website, et cetera. If, if they're, you're spending all that money and coming back to the customer lifetime value and, and, and the business case and they come in, and they leave, are you going to get them back quickly? No, you are not. And it costs much more money to put new people into the top of your marketing funnel than it does to engage with with, with people who have, who have already landed on the website and you're taking them through into conversion and you know, from consideration into conversion. Um, it's much harder. So it's an important stuff to pay attention to. High bounce rates I mean that people are coming in and they're leaving quick. So some it doesn't quite add up that the website's not working or what you're saying you're doing doesn't quite match up to what happens when people arrive okay and this is why it's an important strategic uh, uh stat so uh claire asks what is high so i would say for us okay best practice below 35 percent now without a big web team it's hard to get under that figure so with very small businesses and micros we say anything under 50 is where you want to be aiming for okay anything over 50 start to take a look at it okay okay dokey okay so um some more engagement stats here and metrics things we can measure <clears throat> uh average session duration so the average time a user spends on the site so again it's just a metric uh google expresses it as hours minutes seconds okay um, how long is someone spending on my website? So again, you know, generally what we find is people who tend to spend longer on the website are higher converters. Okay, so we want to be looking at this metric and having a look, how do I improve this metric? How do, and, and we do that through the signposting on our websites or looking at the pages that people land on and then what happens after they move on from those pages. And Google Analytics can help us all with all of these questions. It's all there. It's all completely uh, free to use as well. Okay. Now, one of the most important uh, metrics for you to um, get your head around in Google Analytics and digital marketing, measuring digital marketing, is something called a conversion or a goal. Okay, so this basically is a successful visit to your website. Okay, so this this needs a little bit of work, I think, and you don't have to be technical to do this. And this, this will help you with your website strategy as well. So not now, but key takeaways, ask yourself, honestly, what is a successful visit of someone coming to my website? And then, or, or what should be? And then is my website set up to be able to handle that? Okay, does it actually work? And, and then we can configure it, then we can configure it. So this does need a little bit of configuration. So for example, a successful visit to the Creative Bloom website could be a number of conversions or goals. It would be, certainly if people sign up to my newsletter, okay, the Creative Bloom Boom, not just your average digital marketing newsletter. <laughs> See what I did there? Uh, 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 
because that's that's people coming into the top of my marketing funnel because i know that marketing email marketing is very very engaging okay in, in terms of converting you know i know i can then start putting special offers can put our training out etc it might be someone booking onto one of our training courses coming out again that's kind of like high funnel things for me okay it might be um and I'm, you know these are kind of my primary goals certainly it's for someone to hire us okay so these are my kind of primary goals okay so it's a lead generation website i don't have products i'm selling i'm trying to get people into one of those funnels okay so i can either develop them if they if they're kind of visiting or they actually want to hire okay and again so you need to do the work and kind of map this out as well i might have some secondary goals okay so i might be looking at you know you might time someone pet spends on a site i might be having a look at you know, someone wants someone to download a case study or download a how we work document, etc. Now, these are kind of these are good kind of metrics of engagement, but I just kind of want my primary return on investment goal set, and then I've got my I've got my um uh, secondary. If I am an e-commerce um uh website, okay, so I sell things on my website, okay, and you know the, the customer puts their money into the website. I want to make sure, damn sure. I've got e-commerce set up on the website so I can actually see the monetary values that are going through the website. And, that, and you can pull all of that into Google Analytics. And you get all of that rich. You get all of that rich uh, data in there as well. OK, so I'm just going to continue with some of the uh, um, metrics here as well. So landing pages. OK, because I'm going to talk when I'm going to talk go through the platform i'm going to show you some of these um uh reports okay so a landing page is the first page that somebody lands on on, on a new visit on a new session on your website okay so the, we call them splash pages because it's like you know someone's jumping from their their boat into your website and they splash <laughs> on the page that was my second uh nautical analogy in the session only hope you hope you make an account of these and um yeah so these are important we need to take we need to we need to really look at these pages what's working when people are coming in and where are they coming in and how well do you know if, you know we've just introduced the concept of bounce rates certainly i want to be looking at the bounce rates for all my landing pages and i might be having a look at the total um uh, pages per session after someone lands on a landing page so you know start to go and what happens what happens when they go on that page? Are they moving on or are they not? Again, so you know, it's quite an important, important, important page for us to 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 uh, work through. I know there are lots of questions coming in. Um, what I'm going to do is kind of get through all of this, and then I'm going to have a big QA session at the end. And I know Ollie's kind of on the chat answering some of your questions on there. Otherwise, I'm not going to get through it. Okay, exit rates. Okay, exit rates. So. Um, this is slightly different to bounce rate. Right? This is this is where actually people are leaving. Okay, um, so yeah, a bounce rate is someone lands and leaves. Exit rate is someone you know what tip what pages typically do people leave on? Okay, so again, you know this is going to help me with my user journeys. Do I want people to leave on that page? Uh, is that okay because it's an end of it's the end of the user journey for them? Or if not, then why aren't people leaving on that page because i want to take them there and i'll be having a look at the steps before okay and work out where people people actually going so again it's just helping us program uh program our our, our user journeys a little bit guess again it's quite a quite a useful stat for us to be able to try and get our try and get our heads around okay okay so google also talks about channels okay so a channel is the marketing source okay that a user has traveled along to get to your website okay so i think that these these are the main ones that you'll come across um you as a small business it's not uh a comprehensive list but i think these are some of the main ones you're going so google will talk about organic so that's organic search so that's your seo search engine optimization so we did do a course on seo um uh delivered by ollie there will be a video coming coming out from it um, so that is basically how well you've been found on search engines, natural rankings. OK, then there's a channel called paid. So that will lump all of your paid advertising uh, via Google and other search engines into that one channel. OK, Google, Google will do that because that's one of its main sources of income. So it makes sense that it's got one channel dedicated to it all. It will then talk about referrals. So referrals are your website 
on other people's websites and the traffic that that brings to your website. So that's quite useful. If you have strategic partnerships with a website, you might be paying. Um, I know architects will have to pay to be on Reburn. They will say, oh, well, you get so much traffic. You can use it to validate any claims of any, any, any kind of website associations, anything like that you have to kind of pay to have a presence on. Um, it's also an important SEO metric because third party websites help drive up your authority. Um, so you want to know, you know, it helps give us a bit of a list of where the traffic's coming from. Okay. Can be an important part of the strategy. Social, so social media all grouped in one bucket. That's quite helpful. Google will talk about uh, a channel called direct. Um, so direct is mostly people typing your website URL address into a browser or coming from a, 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 a book link. Um, and they come straight onto straight on straight onto your website. So they haven't found you in a search engine. They've not come through anything else. They've gone da -da -da -da, Yeah, mostly. There's a little bit of noise in there, but you know, for for, for you guys, I think that, that's enough to <coughs> understand what that channel is a little bit. Email. So um, email marketing will 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 appear in there if you use platforms such as uh, Mailchimp or HubSpot or anything like that. Um, you can configure it, and it's quite easy to configure it uh, so that your all your email traffic will go through the email channel. Okay, and then there's a channel called Other, where Google doesn't quite know what to do with. Um, so it can be um, I don't know. It could be a new social media channel, like brand new, till Google works out you know it's a social channel. Or if you're using kind of I don't know, like scheduling software. Um, to post stuff like Google might get lost with what actually is where the traffic is a little bit. Now, I'm not going to talk about that in here, but we can move stuff around. So it's just, you know, again, you might need help with an expert if you kind of going, oh, well, my, oh, my, e oh, my email traffic has gone into other, you can move that stuff. Um, and we will send out a, a few, a few links of resources. So if you are quite hands-on with this, then, you know, we, there's a guide on how you actually can spot where stuff's in the wrong place and move it. But, Generally, you know, it, it, this will give you enough, 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 enough data for to be able to assess these channels accurately. OK, um, <clears throat> nearly there with the terminology. Um, there's some search engine terminology. So searching, you know, so uh, we'll talk, uh, we can actually see queries and keywords. So the search terms that people are using to find our website. OK, it will use the, the term impressions. The, the amount of times our content is served to search engines, that's quite an important stat for SEO. Is Google indexing my content? Is, is it being shown in more keyword searches? And then clicks is very important. How many times are people clicking through from a search engine into a, uh, uh, into, onto my website? And again, Google uses these helpful ratios, click-through rates, percentage, where it takes clicks over impressions. I think the ratios often you'd use in Google and they help us quickly benchmark things. Um, and, and uh, see what's going on. Okay, so without further ado, let's take a look at Google Analytics. Okay. Okie dokie. Can everyone see my Google, Google Analytics? Okay. Uh, someone just give me a thumbs up. Yeah, see it okay? Yeah, brilliant, okay. All right, let me just make it a little bit bigger. Here we go, right, okay. So what I'm not going to do is uh, talk to you about how to install and configure Google Analytics. There's a lot of stuff online about that, okay. I'm gonna show you how you use it, all right? So when you uh, log in to your Google Analytics account, so it has been installed and configured, okay. Um, this is the home page, And uh, on here is, um, uh, you know, the, 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 the interface itself um, has got more user friendly over the years. It just used to be used by webmasters and SEOs like us, but it has got a little bit more user friendly. So um, on the left here, this is your report tree. So this is where you can um, access all of the different types of reports. OK, um, this here is kind of uh, how you navigate through your account and property and views if you've got them set up. So you can see that we've actually got a lot of accounts and a lot of properties and a lot of views because we're a digital marketing agency. If it's just you, you'll probably have one account 
maybe one property and a few views, depending how you config. But all that's accessible there. Um, this is often underused, the search bar. All right, if I've got a question, try typing it in. So if I want to go, there you go, Google, you know, so top search terms, that's quite useful. Time user spends on pages. So what questions can I ask? So again, you know, I might be looking for, you know, oh, I don't know, landing page report. I can't remember where it is, yeah. There we go. Google's telling me where these reports are. So again, it's quite useful just to navigate your way through the interface. Okay. Um, this little bell here, pay attention to that. Okay. If you've got any problems at all, uh, I guess like security notifications, anything like that, Google will ping you a notification, um, uh, a malware attack, for example, if this is configured with Google Search Console, will appear in here so again just pay attention for any kind of notifications that come up um, um in here as well just on this little right hand side bit as well uh this has been relatively new in the last few years it's called insights there we go hang on it doesn't want to appear there we go um it's just some Google AI learning starting to come into uh, interfaces. So, um, you know, I've got a few yeah, website performance week on week, and then it's pulled out an insight for me to look at. Fewer users in return to my site in September. So I can, you know, I can, I can click on that and have a look at that report. And there's a few, you know, common insight reports in there. So again, if you're not that comfortable with navigating to the right reports in a tree or work out what you should be measuring, Google has been quite helpful uh to kind of give, give you a few steers in the right direction so yeah in itself is is very useful so then we come on to the we come on to the home page of google analytics and um it produced these in the last few oh, i think it was about four or five years ago uh this is like a dashboard okay it's like a widget dashboard and um yeah, you did introduce these into response of the whole thing being a bit clumbersome and a bit difficult for non-techies to be able to get the head around now we use this a lot in the agency kind of in our daily spot checks um probably a little bit weekly as well and i think as a small business these are great little reports that you can just go into and just check well what's happening with my marketing so you know i've got an overall traffic okay so i can see you know google starting to um, um introduce some of these metrics that we were talking about yeah so users people like me yeah so this particular website is getting, you know, 15,000 users in this time period. OK, it's I've configured my e-commerce. All right. So I'm actually seeing the money that that's brought in. I've got a conversion rate to how many people come to the website, actually buy something. OK, so I can see that stat. OK, and I can see my total traffic as well. OK, now. Google will um, put these little uh, comparison metrics underneath. Um, where we see our numbers what i is doing is that is google comparing uh the time metric that you're looking at now versus the previous period now how, what time metric is being set on here so i can see here this little report here is actually it's a seven day report it's usually quite standard but i can change this i can change that if i want these little widgets so it can go actually let me just have a look at the last 28 days and there we go and that's the month yeah. OK. And you can see, yeah, this is my month on month performance. So immediately I've got a quick view of how overall is my digital marketing performance versus, you know, the, the prior the prior time period as well. So quite a useful report. We use that daily. That's a daily daily check we use just because we're, you know, having that quick uh, uh, look on there. Um, there's a real time report. Again, if you've got quite a big, complicated website and you want to know that stuff's working, this is quite a useful report to just keep an eye on. Yeah, OK. Um, <clears throat> Google, uh, this is quite a, quite a reasonably useful one as well. I, I don't think this one's quite easy to see. I mean, I'm colorblind as a fruit bat and I can't I can see not a, a million. I can, these colors are two two similar shades. But, yeah, basically it's trying to break out the. The channels for you so direct paid affiliates display other so you know it's just trying to give me a bit of it and if i hover over it here i can actually see that this website is only getting paid search and direct this is one of google's demo demo accounts so that's why it, it looks a little bit funny but you know it, 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 at a glance i can see my week daily traffic stats and it is breaking it into the different channels there so again it's a useful at a glance at a glance uh, website um at a glance review uh, if I am uh, selling to different countries, yeah, someone else colorblind, yeah, and just my spreadsheets are colorful, Ollie will tell you. 
<laughs> um, uh, you know, if I sell by different countries, you know, I can, this is quite cool. I can see, right, how are we doing in India at the minute? Yeah, okay. Um, you can change this to the UK if you're just doing in the UK as well. I, 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 I there's, there are better reports than this, I think. Now, this, this report I like. The time of day matrix. All right. So, um, just a note. If you're going to use this report, make sure you have set your time zone in Google Analytics. Um, I know someone who is using this, a client who are using this, and so we can't stand, you know, we were having a look at the time of day report and we were sending out content. It didn't work. And it, t it turned out that their time of day was Eastern Seaboard. So they were sending out content, you know, trying to do engagement uh, pop ups um, when everyone was asleep. So make sure you've make sure you check that. But this, what it shows is a visual representation of when there are the most users on your website in a week at a specific time. So why is that useful for me as a marketer? That tells me when people are most engaged with my brand, because that's when I'm on my website. So if I'm thinking about when I might be scheduling emails or social media or promotions or anything like that, that yeah, this is the time to get them, all right? This is your sweet spot zone. Okay. I've also got a page report here as well. OK, so, uh, you know, I could see the actual pages within here that people people are arriving on. OK, and the page value. I'll talk to you about that in a little bit. But, you know, just basically how much each page is worth. OK, so again, there are more detailed pages, more detailed reports, give us more, much more granularly, uh, granular data around this. But I think you know, this, 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 yeah, is a daily check or, you know, if you're not comfortable within the reports, I think this is this is good. Uh, sessions devices so i can see you know i've got desktop 70 percent of my traffic and how mobile is doing and the movement again this will help me just keep an eye on you know have a, you know have i got any do i expect more mobile traffic um more or less um, or is is you know if mobile suddenly takes a drop might be something wrong with my mobile site uh i could also just see a profile of users over time okay so we can kind of see um all of these things in here OK, so again, I'm just talking you through the dashboard. Google's built, built in dashboards. OK, um, it will also have a retention stat. OK, as well. I think unless you're kind of more advanced in your Google Analytics, you're probably not going to interpret these reports easily. But it's basically just a view of how often the people come back over what time time period. But I think most people will look at returning user stats, the returning user stat and kind of go into there as well. And then most importantly, it will have a summary of your goals. So goals are things that we have to set up in Google Analytics. OK, so uh, it might be someone got, uh, clicks a form, submit button on a form, goes to a certain page, thank you page, download something. So, and then the engagement stats as well. Um, yeah, amount of time on site, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then more importantly, if you are e-commerce related, you need to set up your e-commerce goals because Google will pull in your product uh, SKUs, your, your product data, if you set it up properly. It is quite technical. Yeah? You've got to get all your product data in there. You've got to give it a specific code, get all the price variants in there. And then uh, Google will then link up to when the payments get triggered through the payment gateways, and it will pull that information into Google Analytics. OK, and I know uh, there's going to be if anyone's interested in that, the next session, Visitor Economy, is going to tell you how you can use some of this data to then remarket, to market to people who have dropped off that for some of those data points in data capture. Very exciting stuff. So that's session seven, Visitor Economy. There we go, plug in more sessions. And it's got my product, it's got my product overview as well. So again, you know, just on that dashboard, I've got some quite interesting uh, information there that I can actually see, you know, as a small business, you know, what's going on, what's going on, what's going on with the marketing. So. Uh, so I'm going to I'm just going to show you some of the typical reports that we use in the agency and that you know we like to use. I want to show you how to interpret them. Um, so my go-to report in the agency that um, after this kind of little dashboard is this acquisition report. Okay, so you can see here I just clicked. You know I've got my report tree over here. Okay, I like the acquisition report. Okay. Now you can see again all, all Google would be doing here is it's, it's expanding its report tree. You know, so there's you can get a bit lost in here. Um, so I'm going to show you. So you don't need to know all of these reports. It depends what what you're actually doing. But I'm just going to go in the overview section. Okay, so I'm just going to click overview. 
Okay, so here's a typical Google Analytics report. So Google Analytics will have two types of report. One's that are graphical, a bit like this, um, and one's that are a, a, a bit more like a data table. And so what I would say is, um, you know, be curious with, with these reports, okay? Uh, and, you know, just have a look and see what they're doing. And, you know, one of the things is you've got to work out what you need to measure, okay? What is it I'm trying to measure? And, you know, if you, if you can, if you say, you know, and say, think about like, what activities am I doing? Okay, therefore I need to measure those marketing channels. Uh, what is a successful visit to the website? Therefore I need to measure that, okay? Um, what's important to me? Is it a content strategy? Is it people coming through my marketing? Yeah, so I need to measure these things. So again, have those questions laid out before we start working out how to, how to, how to, how to do those. So this is a typical report. Okay, now just, just so you know, Google Analytics, um, uh, it's got a, a quite a useful time frame widget now and all the reports you'll see this little um uh, you know this little kind of um date metric so i usually click on it so what i can do is i yeah google usually by default has the last week um you know, I, I usually like to look at the month um okay or the months to date it's typically that's how, how, how we agencies work and i can actually see what's happening in the month versus the previous month so just using that little widget there I can change. I can change my data range. Okay, so I can change my data range in here. So you can see I've gone from a week to a day. Now um, I can see it's quite gradual. So this is a channel report. So Google's actually showing me, um, you know, what where's my traffic coming from? Okay, so um, what percentage in this pie chart? And it's giving me some trend lines as well. And it's also, you know, if I scroll down a little bit, it's starting to break it into a bit of a data table. Okay, so it's actually got. Well, here are your marketing channels. And here are some of those, you know, you should now understand, or at least these shouldn't be alien terms for you now. And basically Google's um, data tables will always kind of run some variation of this. So acquisition stats, where am I getting people from? So, you know, I've got users, new users and sessions. So I've got total people come to the traffic, percentage of those are new, total traffic. Okay, behavioral stats, so I've got bounce rate, pages session, average session duration, that's great. And then I've got my conversions. So if configured, it will have either goals or it will have your e-commerce kind of pulling through. So again, that's quite useful. So you, and you, know, you, start to, you start to get very, very familiar with just that layout, that acquisition behavior conversions. And if you always know that, pretty much whenever you're in a Google Analytics report, you're going to be seeing a report that's got acquisition behavior conversions. That's kind of when you know you know you you know you can start measuring stuff. And Google's always kind of cutting cutting and dicing things um, in various different ways. Now, just going back to this date widget. Okay, so if I want to compare my performance this month versus last month, I can just click this, and I can compare to the previous period. I can set this how I like. I can do it to the prior year, so I can do year on year analysis. Depends what I'm looking at, what I'm trying to measure. Okay, but for now, I'm just going to do uh, the previous period. So, how am I doing this month to date? versus the same time period last month. Okay, so this is useful. So Google then, um, you know, gives me, so I can actually see I'm doing a lot more on paid search this month than last month. So how is that actually performing? So then Google, you know, this overview report is quite useful to at a glance, you know, it's very visual. I can actually see, you know, I've got these traffic lights. So I can actually see, you know, I've got, you know, more users, but less new users. My bounce rate has deteriorated. Okay, but my other engagement stats are up. But yeah, most importantly, my e-commerce transactions are up uh, on my goals might be up. So that's my win. Yeah. Okay. I'm jumping to that conversion. And I can actually see which channels are contributing to that with this nice, easy to read bar graph. So I can actually see uh, that um, this channel, my other, that's not very helpful, is it? This is a bunch of stuff. Grouping. Again, this is a demo account, so it's not going to be as rich with the data. Um, but what we can see is my other channel is actually kind of contributing towards my uplift in sales. So again, you know, just with the, just with this one report, I've been able to at a glance see which of my marketing channels is working well or not. Okay, and you know that took us a couple of minutes to to measure that marketing performance. Again, it's important that we've configured these goals. Um, Otherwise, and these you know, e-commerce transactions, otherwise you're not going to have any data in here. Okay. That's a whole different workshop and there's lots of stuff online um, around it as well. Or you can speak to a professional. I'm pretty sure there are some of the digital champions who are experts in this as well. I know Andrew uh, uh, Beadle is um, uh, pretty good at this. And that's free support. So there we go. 
all right so what i did there is i just clicked on um uh, it said click here to show me a bit more data so you'll you know with google analytics you can always click through and drill down okay so um I, this the and what this does is I've moved from the graphical report into the data table behind it, okay, um, which I think is a, just a little, it, it just at a glance just shows you the data a little bit, um, easy, well, it's, in, it's in a table rather than kind of, you know, graphically as well. So again, you know, very typical, I've got a trend line up here, so I can see the trend of uh, my traffic. So again, I'm, I might be having a look at patterns here, okay, um, you know, I could do this annually so if i wanted to let me do this annually okay um so i can stretch this out what was it october let's just have a look at october so okay so seasonality very important to get your head around your business's seasonality okay when are my peaks and troughs okay in a year so i might be, you know so here i can actually see i've got a few peaks and troughs now you can use google's um uh just report grouping here so you can see the weekly traffic profile Okay, and I can actually see, you know, Christmas, okay, selling all my toys, um, and here's my summer peak, I'd expect to see that. So you want to be having a look at seasonality, because, you know, if I'm if I'm doing a report month on month, and actually, I just know that I always have a good August compared to a poorer September, or vice versa, it's important for me to notice in my measuring. Okay, go also have a look at monthly activity. Okay, so, I can, so I'm looking for patterns here, patterns on my traffic profile, okay. All right. And then, you know, within here, within this data table, OK, I can then see I've got, again, acquisition stats, metrics, behavior metrics, and I've got my conversions. OK, and it's all split by something what we call a dimension. So the, the dimension here is it's not I'm not talking about Doctor Who. OK, dimension is what is the thing we are cutting it by? So in this report, marketing channel. OK, so I'm going to show you some other dimensions, um, probably the fifth. Don't know. <laughs> I am a sci-fi geek. Uh, so this is, you know, so actually you're able to cut this data. So again, you know, I'm able to see at a glance. Uh, okay, you know, where am I getting the most users from by marketing channel? Uh, which, where's the percentage of new users? Okay. Yeah, where's my highest bounce rate? So I can hear, actually paid search is my highest bounce rate. I'd expect that from paid search. Um, yeah, you're generally kind of, you're, you're bidding to kind of pull people in and you actually would expect a bit of a, bit of a higher bit of a higher bounce rate so again but you know um I, you know actually i can see what's called display marketing which is a type of paid advertising at a much higher bounce rate than paid search so if i'm thinking about where i'm putting my budget next year you know um i might want to just make sure i'm happy with the return on investment for each of these you know but i can i can see that uh organic search so people finding me on google actually gets me the highest engagement stats one of the highest engagement stats on my website so three minutes on average but actually, it's one of the lowest channels for bringing me traffic. So I might start driving me towards a specific course of action. I need to invest in my search engine optimization because I know from these stats, if I bring in more people to my website through this channel, I get higher engagement rates. Okay. And also, I can see, you know, very important, I can see my conversions. Okay. So I'm looking at my transactions, the value it brings, and what we call the conversion rate as well. Again, so, you know, again, it's a super, super useful uh, report to be able to uh, um, just see what's happening on our, on our, on our, on our marketing um, performance. Okay. So, as well as acquisition, okay, Google Analytics also gives us some audience metrics. Okay, so within this, what I can do is I can see some of the attributes of users, okay, who come to the website. So that's quite useful, okay? So what's the behavior of people who come to the website and what does Google know about them as a group? Okay, so again, you know, the overview uh, reports, um, again, so yeah, it'll give you some key stats. So again, you know, users versus new users, uh, you know, what's the average bounce rate? Uh, here, this useful uh, pie chart here, new users versus returning users. Again, if I'm thinking about the different ways of the marketing funnel, I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to measure. Yeah, again, I've got this information in here and Google will let you cut and dice by that information as well. And there's a, few there's a few useful reports in here. So I think the demographic report is uh, very useful. Uh, 
Okay, so um, demographic report. What is the age age bracket of people who come to the website? Well, that's useful. Okay. Now, what you want to do with this report is work out what is the age bracket of the people I'm targeting. <laughs> do the two match? Is there a is there a surprise? Because it's you know your content strategy theoretically would be aligned to you know maybe the age brackets as well, and also also the gender bias. Okay, so again, these are quite useful things when you're thinking about who's actually coming to the website. So we can actually cut and dice uh, our information in there as well. There are some interest reports. Now, Google knows this through people's browsing history and through, uh, you know, by the, by the types of website you go to, it creates a profile for you or this de detail is in your Google account, okay? You, you know, you, we all sign the uh, data. You can use my data uh Google to uh, consolidate this, this, this data and then use it in, in reports like this. Okay, can be a little slow to load sometimes Google Analytics. So I'm just loading the interest report. Doesn't want to load. Okay, that one did well. I'll come back to that one. Okay, I'm just gonna go to the geo report. here we go so here we go so we've got we've got a geographic uh, report as well so again this is quite useful so if you sell internationally i think most of you probably don't but um if you do sell internationally again it will tell you again those stats acquisition where people come you know how many people are getting behavior what happens when they arrive and then you know the, the conversions etc so i actually see a breakdown by country okay if I then want to focus in laser in on the UK, very easy to do. I can just click on the UK. Okay, and then it will show me this report. And if you just press that little city button there, aha, I can see where I've got my hotspot. You know, this kind of shows me where I'm getting my hotspot of users. I can then scroll down here and I can see oh, actually where are where are mo mo most of the users' IP addresses uh, located who come to the site? If you use paid advertising, this can be extremely valuable because it's actually giving you some of the hotspots where you might be getting uh, more traffic and you might be able to kind of, uh, you know, uh, focus in some of your uh, marketing efforts, paid advertising in around some of these, some of these cities. So again, same, same metric, acquisition, behavior, conversions, okay, all within, all within, all within that one report. So, you know, it's very... Very, very useful. Okay, so, so that's just some of the, the geo reports as well. So the reason why I'm showing you these guys as well is, you know, ideally you or someone in your business needs to be looking at this. Okay, and uh, yeah, in our experience, certainly with, with a smaller business, it's going to be you or it's going to be someone in your marketing team. So the important thing is that someone's looking at this or you've got somebody who can look at this for you or you or from this session, you've got a bit of an idea of how to direct someone to uh, uh, you know, uh, look, at, look at what you need to do. So um, the, the uh, final, just some of the final reports I'm, I'm just gonna go through before we kind of um, move on to actually what we use this stuff for, okay? It's just in the behavior section, uh, some very, very useful things in here. Okay, so um, site content, okay? Site content just in here, so landing pages, Very useful. Okay, so again, I can see what are the top pages that people are arriving on the website to. That's extremely useful. Um, uh, you know, I can actually see you know where they're actually coming from. I can, you know, a bit more advanced stuff, but it's something called segments. So it's basically a way to me to cut it. I can click that and select social media, and then this would just become a landing pages by social media report. Again, got acquisition stats, behavior, conversions. So you know, looking on this report. I can see that my third, fourth highest landing page has got a bounce rate of 90%. So 90% of the people who come at that page leave without taking an action. It's got really low uh, transactions. So something's wrong with that page or I'm marketing, I'm marketing it badly. Okay. And when people arrive, uh, you know, it hasn't matched up from what I've said it was. Okay. So immediately this is helping me pull out what, what the problem is um, uh, in these reports. Um, there's a few of the useful reports in here as well. Uh, 
So we've got all pages. So rather than just a landing page, this is looking at the entire traffic that all of your pages get, which is quite useful again, because this, this then takes into account, you know, the journey that people take through the site, the total number of pages uh, visited. And again, it's just really, 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 really useful for me to be able to uh, assess my website performance by looking by looking by looking at the pages okay by looking at the total pages that we're in here and again within here as well i've got slightly different metrics I've, let's talk about page views because these are pages now so you know uh, how many times has a page been viewed the average time on the page entrances uh, people who've come through it as well um i've got bounce rates by page as well and then i've got my exits my exit rates so where are people actually exiting? Okay, and again, with any Google Analytics report, you can just kind of click on a metric and it will um, sort it by um, uh, uh, the highest values. You can actually see, you know, where am I getting, uh, getting my exits, right? There's a, there's a more detailed uh, report on there as well. Okay, so again, just exit rates, and I can see a bit more, bit more detail. Uh, where are my biggest amount of exits? So again, if I'm thinking about these experience, or you know, where actually people leaving, you know, most people leaving on my homepage isn't probably great. All right, I might want to have a look at that. So that's what this report tells me. Okay, um, there's a few, probably just one more to get your head around, and it will be uh, again. So it's in the acquisition thing. Mobile reporting, okay. Again, if you forget where this report is, you can find it by just popping it into this search bar. Yeah, okay. So what traffic are you getting by desktop, mobile, and tablet? Okay, and it's it's basically cut all of that data. Now you can you can use those segments through any of the reports I showed you, you can see traffic by location or by audience age, et cetera. But, you know, this just tells you, you know, where you're getting your traffic from by the different kind of devices. Um, there are reports that break this down into actual devices. So you can check how well your uh, website is served on, you know, uh, iOS versus, um, uh, what's the Google one? The Google one. <laughs> Um, I can't remember what that operating system is called anymore. It's, it's left Android. Right. Android. God. <laughs> Just going. And it also, it'll have a look at different like, popular devices like Samsung versus an iPhone versus a tablet, et cetera. Um, again, but it's the same thing. Acquisition stats, behavior, conversion. So this might be one for you to review with your developer if you have one, but it will show you how well the mobile version of the site is it bringing in traffic, getting call to actions, getting people through than, than, than your desktop. Um, and this is increasingly important. Mobile first websites is is what we what we preach in today's uh, 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 um, web infrastructure. Okay, you design your mobile first, and your desktop kind of should then be a bigger extension of it. Because year on year, more searches are going on to mobile from desktop platforms. Not for every sector. Some professional sectors, B two B, it kind of still on desktop, but. It is a growing stat, and also a screen size is increasing. Uh, it's it's important to, have to keep keep on top of them. So, um, one last report, and then I'm going to go back into content, and I'm going to have a QA section. And there was lots of questions flying in. Um, okay, I'm just going to go into conversions. Wants to load, and I'm going to go into my goals, uh, goal overview. Okay, so um, the goal overview, I think is very useful because it will just show you once we've configured goals within our, our uh, Google Analytics, so a successful visit to the website, it just gives me a summary on one page of how that's doing. Again, I've got this trend line and I can actually see for this account, I'm pretty happy with the goals because it's going in a northwards direction, its overall trajectory. And I can start to use this little filter to check out you know, which goal is actually working where as well, you know, so I've got a purchase completion, I've got uh, someone's entered the checkout, I've got a registration, I might have a newsletter, a download, you know, so I can filter all of that in here and I can quickly see, you know, what, what, you know, how well is my website performing? And again, if you then, customer lifetime value, if we know, if we've got those stats, I know how many newsletters I need to send out to in order to get one customer, 
I'm starting to get some ROI metrics. Now you can program those values into Google Analytics, into the goals. So I can set a goal value. So I can say that this goal is worth, if someone downloads a newsletter, it's worth 20 pounds to me because you know that's how I've worked out the metrics. Then you can get all of that return on investment data flowing through your analytics. Okay, so that's quite useful to kind of set those up. Again, there will be some documentation going out around how you set up goals and put values to it. But just all you need to know as a business owner is that you can set financial values in Google Analytics to your customer lifetime or whatever metric you want to do, even if you don't sell e-commerce on the website. Okay, so you can put values of sales uh, into you can actually upload sales as well but you know it's, it's getting a bit more a bit more advanced so this is quite useful so i can see the locations that the goals are triggering on as well again there's there's so many reports there's so many reports in here but i think they, these are probably some of the main ones that you might want to uh, uh use on a more frequent and regular basis okay so what i'm going to do now is i am going to uh, hop back into the slides and i'm just going to talk about how we use um and there's there's a whole smorgasbord of other reports in there as well so there's seo reports um which will give you keywords uh search terms the social media reports that have a look at uh you know where the traffic's coming from so social channels again you can just click through and keep going through um but again we could spend three hours going through going through all of this and uh you know we'd, we'd probably still be here so okay attribution Okay, so attribution is quite important. Okay, so what do we mean by the word attribution? So attributing the sale or the goal conversion or whatever it is to the actual channel that it comes from. Okay, now what Google Analytics will do is a tendency to report something called last click. All right, so uh, in, this is an example of a uh, user journey to them to buy so they came through display advertising which is paid media um it's like digital graphics on other websites um uh, on third party sites so someone's come through there okay they've then gone away at some point and then googled for what i do all right found it and then clicked on one of my adverts come on the website gone back away and then then when they wanted to buy it they typed in my URL directly into a web browser and then they bought. And that's my top co uh, attribution value. OK, so it's called a conversion path. Now, this report exists in Google Analytics. It's under the section called attribution. I'll quickly show you it. So again, it's a little bit more advanced. But what we want to do is at least have a bit of a view for what are the top paths that people come through. Because generally, Google is going to report on these what we call the last click. Um, and it's ignoring the work being done by the other channels okay so just down here in attribution in fact no it's not that one is it it's been moved this is the milk channel funnel down here there we go so i can see my top conversion paths and here we go so um it will it will it will pad it out in here for me um this one's not very rich with data because it is a demo account and most of it's coming through direct but again that top conversion path have a look at it once it's set up if it's set up then it would surprise you it just shows you where what's doing what does what's the most common pathway for a user digital touch points via the channels to come to your website and convert okay so very useful very useful okay Okay. Okay, so measuring marketing performance. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to we want to pick some uh metrics. Okay, so we want to have something that's comparative. All right, so this month versus last month, this quarter versus last quarter. This year versus last year so that's understandable so you, you can understand it it's no use someone coming up with a report that's full of gobbledygook okay so it's relevant to action these are our highest exit rates pages therefore we need to have a look at the how we set up those pages um, in our next month's website activity a ratio or a rate helps condense uh condense things and then we've got granular metrics versus general okay so we can get a lot 
very lost in the granular. Okay, but you know, it is going to be important to have some kind of the detail, but also kind of you know uh, general. So total traffic. You know that's going to get us so far because I'm having a look at the total traffic, all my total marketing, but it doesn't actually tell me which digital channel to focus in on. That's where the granular comes in. Okay. Avoid what we call vanity metrics. So, you know, the total traffic I got this week, I'm going to report it, or the total followers I've got. What does that actually tell you about your business? What does that actually tell you about your marketing performance? OK, that's why you want to have some kind of a comparison, OK, or something that leads to action. OK, so don't just say, oh, great, we've got 500 visits to our website this month. So what? What have you been doing? What is that like versus last period versus like last year? What what's brought, has that changed? What are the, you know, where's that actually come from? Who's come? Who's coming there, et cetera, et cetera. So, again, just make sure we've got some good. We've got some good things in there. So what do we measure? So. On a weekly basis, you know, typically we're running campaigns or we're running activity. So I think, you know, you want to be measuring you know, you, the, the engagement of the content of your campaigns, whether you're doing, you know, emailers or social media to kind of push people out or, you know, whatever the campaign might be for you. Um, I would be having a look at the campaign success. OK, there is a way in Google Analytics to tag a campaign. Again, we'll send documentation out that, but you can kind of uh, create a link which basically says, Whenever someone clicks on any of my content, put it in this campaign bucket, and there is a campaign report in Google Google Analytics. Okay. Monthly, what should I report on monthly? So I think you know you're looking at your month on month digital performance on here. So I'd be looking at my channel reports, which I showed you in the acquisition. I'd be having a look at my landing pages. Okay, a report I showed you, and I'd probably be having a look because well, I'm an SEO. If I'm you know doing much more an SEO uh, search, or I'd be putting in my my traction channel report. So because we're an SEO, I'm going to put search metrics in here. But, you know, if your traction channel is email marketing, I'll be putting my email marketing channel in there, etc. I'll be just having a really good look at that, at that at my traction channel. And then quarterly. OK, so I think quarterly is a strategic check. All right. So I think you're having a look at this quarter versus last quarter. OK, and also this quarter versus the same quarter last year i'll be having a look at channel performance good look at all of the marketing channels i'll be having a look at behavior reports i'll be having a little bit look on the technical so there are a few reports in there which shows you site speed and I, within there you can put in you know bounce rates and exit rates and i'll be having a look at content performance so there's landing page reports there's page reports what's working what's not on the website and again none of this will bear much fruit if you haven't got goals or conversion set up okay there is some data you can get from it, but without that, how do you know whether it's worked? Yeah. So again, this is this is the key, the key for it. And then annually, I think this is your end of year strategic check, full year versus last year. How do we do versus last year? So I'll be looking at channel return on investment. That's when I'll be bringing in, well, how much did we cost? How much did we spend and all of this stuff versus what it's actually brought in? This is where I'm really kind of bringing in my sales data as well. We're having a look at those behavior reports. Pull, pulling out anything any problems on the website i'm really kind of setting my plan for next year here so i need to know what pages work didn't work you know what do we need to get developers to do what's the site speed like what's the mobile like you know what devices are working i'm just getting much more into uh, those things and we have a look at all of the campaigns i've run as well you know acquisition behavior conversions and all of this kind of stuff and i'll be kind of digging into digging into all of these different types of reports it's typically how how, how we run things in in creative bloom so Nearly get to the end of the Q8 section. Uh, all I can see is questions just flying into the chat. <laughs> so um, offline is, is a, a broad subject to talk about. There's so much we could talk about. So offline reporting, this is very important. You can get some advanced uh, customer relationship management software, of which Series 3 uh, have a webinar on. <laughs> And but if you don't, which will actually tie everything up for you. So it will actually put your sales in and it brings in Google Analytics and you can actually cross pollinate lead opportunity plus your sales with all of the GA data, Google Analytics data. If you don't have that and most small clients don't tend to have that, just make sure you've got a spreadsheet which captures sales inquiries. OK, sales spreadsheet. OK, it's got the name of the person, the company, the date, service type how they found you, okay, if they found you through uh, um, 
uh, search marketing, the keyword that they used, uh, any specific piece of content. So, you know, people don't mind answering this question. So when someone calls Creative Bloom, well, can I just ask for our marketing how you found us? I go, oh, yeah, sure, yeah, I found you uh, typing in the best kick-ass digital agency in Brighton <laughs> or something like that. And then I go, oh, hey, right, great, thanks for that, you know. And it, it is great, this is marketing gold because this is, I absolutely know this is my, where my leads have come from, okay? And I can use this at the end of the year just to kind of cross-check or in my quarterly review just to cross-check what I'm seeing in Google Analytics. Um, so very, very useful. And whether whether it actually turned to a sale and then I could put the value of the sale on. And this is going to help with my marketing ROI as well. So very useful to have that. So if you haven't got, you know, if you haven't got a good configuration of Google Analytics and you haven't got a, a nice piece of software that does it for you, then this is the vanilla minimum requirement. Yeah, spreadsheet. I like spreadsheets. Spreadsheet that just captures your inbound um, requirements. If you've got other people who work in the business, Make sure that they use this. Okay, this will really, really help. It's marked in gold. It's marked in gold. All right, so ooh, very quickly, okay. So uh, armed with this knowledge, all right, I'd just like you to pop into the chat for me. Okay, so I've just gone through how, what, you know, how we actually measure marketing return investment, how we actually use the main tool, free tool in digital marketing, Google Analytics, and gone through some of the things that you can measure. And I've gone through how we as an agency do our spot check. So just um, if you put into the chat for me, how do you think, what do you think you should measure now for your business? Um, what do you think is important for your business to measure? Pop that into the chat for me. Okay, I've got form fills, sales conversions, Okay, how customers use and page visited, brilliant. Conversion rate by channel, very good, yeah. So by marketing channel, how's it actually working? Okay, any more? Results of ad campaigns, okay. Someone's using uh, uh, Google AdWords, okay. Um, how many people reading our emails? Time and location of sales, there's a huge amount coming here. So the, the main thing is, Make sure you've got your business objectives. What are my business objectives? If you haven't got business objectives, they were covered in series one and those videos will be coming out. <laughs> uh, and there are some digital champions who can help you on this call today who can help you put your business objectives uh, together. Okay. Um, how can I measure how local marketing and social media works? You can, you can, you can, you can work all of that out because you can look at the local traffic. You can look at the social media channels using Google Analytics. So what are my objectives? What then do I need to configure in tools like Google Analytics to be able to answer those business objectives. That's key to this. So I know I've used one specific um, tool here. There are others available, but I think this is the industry-wide digital marketing anal uh, analysis tool. Okay. So just before I wrap it, we've got the Q&A, um, uh, and I will go into Q&A. There are some quite cool other tools out there, something called Data Studio. Uh, which you can use to configure real time, just more kind of graphical uh, reports. And that will pull in data sources from everywhere, like Google Analytics. If you use SEO tools, pulls that in. You can like, hook up spreadsheets to it. You can hook up your CRMs to it. You can, hook, you can just hook up everything to it, uh, basically. Um, uh, and it, it, it will combine all of the data sets and you can have, you know, everything. You can have your sales in there. You can have your Google. So you can come, you can create these, 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 these excellent data, data reporting dashboards. And it's all real time pretty much as well. So you can, you know, people who aren't comfortable using uh, the, uh, Google Analytics, you can create a dashboard for them or even get a template off the website for free. You've got to configure it. You need a bit of help getting it together. And then you've got these nice real-time dashboards that you can you can use um, that make things a little bit easier. Um, and, you know, if there are more advanced reporting for SEO, I've track all of your keywords and your competitors and the social media analytics platform. There's a whole smorgasbord of stuff out there. Um, as a small business, I think Google Analytics is, is going to be everything that you're going to need. And probably if social media is very important for you, make sure you're looking at the social media insight analytics uh, reports as well, because, you know, that's where you're going to see all your engagement stats, um, because not a lot of that comes with uh, Google Analytics. Google Analytics just looking at what happens when people arrive on the site. 
Okay, right. Okay, before I move on to the next uh, next slide, I'm just we've got a bit of time for QA. Um, I'm going to start off the QA, Stu. Yeah, we'll start off the QA. <laughs> so there's so been a good job, Stu. That, 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 that was really good. There's loads to cover on that. That was spot on. Um, there's been loads of people asking questions in the chat. So I just wanted to kind of cover a few things um, firstly, just to maybe answer a few questions at once. But um, it's important to remember that, that Google Analytics doesn't give user information. So it's giving um, it's giving data about sessions on your website. So if, if, if let's say someone had access to your analytics account, they can't do anything um, uh, untoward with it. It's, it's just someone will be able to see if you're getting traffic to your website, what pages they're landing on and that kind of thing. <clears throat> now saying that, a lot of um, you may be in the situation where a developer will install Google An Analytics for you and you need a Google Analytics account, uh, sorry, a, a, a Google account, an email address, the Google one, um, to actually view this information and to be and to get your address added to your Google Analytics account. So if a developer has set up your Google Analytics account for you, to get access to that, you need to have a Google email address and you need to get them to just add, add you as an administrator to that Analytics account. And then if you wanna remove them afterwards, you can remove them yourself. Um, but there, you know, most developers, it may be something that they've set up and maybe forgotten about. So they're, they're very unlikely to be doing anything uh, malicious with it. Um, they probably have hundreds of analytics accounts. So um, you should be able to just ask them. And as I said earlier, the worst comes to worse. If you really feel uncomfortable and you can't get in touch with them, it's just a bit of code that's been installed on the website. So you can take off their code and you can set up a new analytics account and just install that new code. Um, but the data will only collect from the day that you reinstall it. So um, I know there might be some more questions on that. So does anyone have any more questions on analytics while we're just kind of talking about the kind of setup and access to it? Feel free to jump on. So you might be muted. So you might have to unmute your microphone yeah. just so you just, know. Just while we're waiting, I'm because I'm we've got four minutes to our closed session. I'm going to relaunch the poll. Yeah. Okay. Um, just ask everyone to answer that question for me again. Okay, so I'm relaunching the poll. Hopefully that's coming up. Um, and then we can answer, ask and answer another question. Okay, all right. So uh, there was a question from Yvette Oli. Sorry, sorry, what was uh, There question? was a question from Yvette. Uh, where is that? That's not come through on mine. Oh, okay. It said, can I measure how local marketing and social media oh, yeah. work is driving traffic to the main website? Gotcha. So, um, yeah, depending, I mean, what, what do you mean by local marketing? Um, if that, I mean, essentially anything that you're, um, any channels that you're using to, to feel as your marketing, um, you could jump into that source um, acquisition channel. So the source, that's where traffic's coming from. And immediately you can break it down into different social channels. You can break it down into your email marketing, whether you're doing Facebook ads, that kind of thing. And individually look at each channel and how they're performing, you know, the conversion rate of each, the bounce rate, whether people are leaving straight away. So it's exactly one of those reports you showed you. And as we say, the best thing to do is, is don't be afraid, jump in. You can't mess anything up. So dive in there and just kind of dig around as much as you can. Um, let's have a look. Um, does it measure revenue if you're using third party embedded stores as opposed to WordPress e-commerce plugin, for example? You have to just set it up, don't you, Stu? Just have to kind of link link it together. Yeah. Um, obviously, whether you're, you know, if you're talking about having a Shopify plugin or something like that, um, there are there are definitely ways to link it together. And and I mean. Analytics is very versatile, so you can pretty much do whatever you can with it. It just depends how technical it gets. Yes, there are there are usually three. You can you can, you can always get it done. There's usually a, a really easy one where whoever's built that third party platform has made it really easy. And you just put in your Google Analytics code and it works. It does all the work for you. There is kind of in the middle where you've got to use plugins to um, interface, or there's what we call the kicking and screaming. So the kicking and screaming is you need to get a developer to write a fair bit of code data tables, things like that, that works in the background that will then shove uh, the uh, Google Analytics session data into the third party platform and then rips it back out and puts it into Google Analytics. But 
Um, if you get to that point, you will definitely need the help of an expert. OK, I am going to stop the questions there uh, because we unfortunately have run out of time, but um, we will uh, be having a QA session on. Uh, let me just share my screen. OK. <coughs> two more webinars left okay so we are having a q a with all of these marketing panels and quite a few of these digital champions are going to be able to answer a lot of these questions we've been capturing these questions as well so that's going to be a great great session uh you've had you're all the trainers from this series on as well and plus digital champions plus a whole host of the people i'm going to be the host it's going to be like blankety blank does marketing <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> On a pirate ship. Still working out how I'm going to check um, <laughs> that. Yeah. Um, so that's you know, it's going to be, gonna be a great yeah. section, and we're going to we're going to we're going to answer lots of questions. And then uh, on on next Tuesday, digital tools for the visitor economy. It's going to talk about some of this cool stuff you can do if you kind of you you know you've got e-commerce sites here, you've got hotels, you've got events, you know, augmented reality, remarketing, data capture, all this whole host of stuff in there. Plus a case study from a business who digitized their business. So. Uh, you can book those places following this link or just search for Recover and Rise West Sussex on Google. A few more just to go. Also, oh, Series 3 of these courses is available. Okay, excellent stuff. I've booked onto a few of these as well. Um, productivity uh, tools. There's some great, great, great content on here as well. How you can use tools to free up more of our time as business owners or uh, people to, to actually spend it on marketing or other things working on your business okay so if time's your problem with your marketing you need to go on one of these courses because you need to free up your time and this is going to help you okay so one last from us as well we talked about the digital champions um, there's a few of you on here if you want to give us a wave chats okay uh to contact the digital champions uh email growth.hub at coastcapital.org.uk um and you will you'll get these slides as well. Um, just give them pop pop in your details in there. Someone will get back to you to then assign a digital champion to you. You know if if, if you get the support as well. And there is uh, there is other information that that is in there uh, as well. And with the link that follows this uh, uh, course, there are details of how to contact the digital champions. Okay. Um, there's some other funding available as well. The business hot house, low case, and rise. They have funding available, like match funded projects in it for innovation, for low carbon projects as well, and uh, expert guidance and grant funding from Business Hot House. But again, the digital champions will help, help me navigate through uh, those particular areas of funding. So if you're with Sussex Business, there's free support and there's money. So get on. I'd, I'd, I'd take advantage to it is, 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 is my take home for you guys. OK. Good job, Thank mate. Thank you very much for all coming. Okay. Thanks, everyone. See you at the next one.